Hello everyone and welcome back to Southeast Guitar Bear Academy. Today we're going to be doing a little more advanced install on a Mitchell's plate mate. So we have these standard ones. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised we haven't done one of these on a basic acoustic once before. Um, it's a pretty simple install. There's nothing too crazy to it. These things are awesome. These are lifesavers. Um, so basically the whole idea of this design for the most part is that uh, over time your bridge plate up underneath the ball ends start to chew up into the bridge plate and what you'll see is as you tune the guitar up the ball end of the string will start to pull up through the bridge plate on the bottom and then you'll see the winds at the base of the string start to pull up over the saddle now what that's going to do is that's actually going to cause buzzing issue, issues intonation issues um, if your wind is on the bottom of the string it's going to cause string height issues and consistencies matching the radius of the fingerboard with the saddle um, so these things are awesome. They actually help a lot with tone as well. Uh, great design. Uh, they don't pay me to say that. They're just a good invention. So, uh, But today we're actually going to be installing one on uh, something with F holes, something without a sound hole. So this is a little bit trickier than usual, so there's a little bit more to it. Um, but we'll walk you guys through it real quick. Nothing too crazy, nothing too bad. Um, I'm over here at Sam's bench today. Sam is going to give me a hand with some of this as we go if it does turn into a two-person job. So um, what you're gonna want is a couple of guitar strings you got sitting around. Use the wound ones because we're actually gonna be soldering a couple strings together to feed them through the bridge pin holes to actually get everything centered. Um, you're gonna need a couple washers that have a smaller hole on the inside, a smaller diameter so that the ball end does not slide through that. You need that for support. And we're literally just gonna be holding these on either side, feeding it through the F holes and then bringing it up to the bottom of the bridge plate on the inside. So let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, we're going to run our strings through so that we can pull the guide string up through the bottom. So we're actually going to come through the top first. And you see I've already tinned these with a little bit of solder. Just put a little bit of solder on the ends of your strings. Uh, feed these through first. Doesn't hurt to have a couple clothespins on hand. Hold these strings in place. So they don't get pulled back down through the body. Keep a paper towel on hand. You don't want any solder splatter on anything. Um, and as usual, this is in the middle of a work day, so there might be some background noise going on. Just ignore it. So before you go in there, first there's going to be a bunch of different string spacings for these. So you want to be sure you have the proper string spacing that actually matches the bridge that you're working on. So we've already measured this one out. This one fits perfectly. This is exactly what we want. I think it's nice and, nice and solid. Look at your two E's, your two outside strings, and make sure everything's going to line up. So also you have the notches that go towards the front of the bridge. We're going to go ahead and leave this self-adhesive. We're going to go ahead and leave this paper on there until we actually get everything jigged up, and then we're going to be able to rip the paper off and then pull everything through, secure it with some of the strings that are already on there, and then we'll be able to remove our strings that we use to guide everything in through there. Let's go ahead and toss your washer on your string, drop it down to the ball end. Be sure you're facing the correct way. We're going to start on the base side. So we're going to stick with our base side string hole there. And as you see, once we get it in there, that washer is just going to pull it right up against the bridge plate and it's going to hold everything in place. So we're going to go ahead and solder these two together, which I have already lost the other side. Go ahead and pull this up here real quick. Hold that in place once again. And I'm just going to solder these two strings together so that we can start by feeding these through the F hole up onto the bridge plate. And your strings will get hot. Your solder does get hot. Just uh, be careful. Try not to burn yourself. It's kind of tricky to line these two up. If you're just using the one hand. Hold that there. We'll go ahead and solder these strings together here. Give ourselves a little bit of support. Just let that cool. Don't pull it away too quick. It does take a little bit longer on these strings. The solder and the soldering iron do heat the strings up pretty quickly and they do stay hot, so be careful as you're working with these. Don't burn yourself. 
but that also gives it a little longer drying time. So there we go. That looks nice and solid. So now we're going to go ahead and pull our clothespin off. We're going to feed this in through the F hole. So now we have our solder point up out of the bridge, out of the way. And we're going to come in through the F hole. And like I said, remember you're on your base side. So as we come through, your notches are going to be facing the front. So we're going to go ahead and drop this in. We're going to let gravity do our work. Send it to the other side. And we're going to repeat this exact same thing on the treble side of the instrument. Get your hook, go ahead and pull the plate mate back up out of there. And get that on the treble side sticking out here. I'll let this sit right there. And we're going to repeat the same thing that we did on the base side. So take our string, go ahead and feed it on through. It's not too often you'll run into this, but when you do, it's good to know how it's done. And same on this side. We're going to get our string. We're going to feed it through get our washer. Feed it through the plate mate. It's going to support up on the bottom on both sides. As you can see, it's just going to hold it right in place. Let's go ahead and solder these two together, same as we did on the other side. We're just repeating the exact same steps. Pulling that and let it dry. Let it solidify there. solid and now we have everything secure on our plate mate here we're gonna pull this string back through same as we did on the base side so now we have both of our soldered points out nice and safe so those won't come loose on us now as we feed this through it's gonna flip it's gonna line up right with the front so, like I said, this is self-adhesive. You want to go ahead and pull that self-adhesive sticky part off. And rip that right off of there. Try not to let that touch anything as you're feeding this through. Now, when you feed this through, you want to come up almost to the bridge plate completely. You want to try to stay just a little below it. It's a, kind of a tricky part right here, um, but you want to get it so that you can then go through and kind of line it up with your, your holes. You actually want to line it up nice and solid with your holes. And then we're going to feed our strings back through over to this side and put a little bit of string tension on them. So I got these pulled up here, and drop them through. And start to come up just a little bit on our holes. Let's see if we can line everything up. pretty clean. So we're just going to hold these here just for a second. We're going to come through and we're going to use our 
D and RG. The washers are a little big, so they're actually feeding in closer to the, the B and the A. So we're just going to use our two center strings right here. And get this clustered, unclustered. These out of the way here. These are our bridge pins. Yep. These go to this. Okay, cool. And we'll do one string at a time. We're going to do our D first. And we're going to try to feed it down in through it's a little tricky to get down in there. Tension. Hold that in place here. And then you want your ball in to be able to freely go down past that bridge plate so that it gets up underneath it and actually grips onto it. Give ourselves a little bit more slack around here. A little bit more string length. Sam, would you come over here for a second? Yep. Just hold those. You don't need to be too tight. Just hold them for a second. Yep. And then come down through the bottom of the plate mate. And pull that up against the plate mate itself. And throw our saddle in here. And let's go ahead and line up our G. Do the same thing. And give it a little bit more slack. Like I said, you want that ball in to come down past the plate mate, down through the bottom. So when you put your bridge pin in, the the ball in pulls up against it and holds it in place. And we're gonna go ahead and tighten these up. A little bit of tension. We got our two bridge pins in here. We're pulling up against the plate. Let's go with these. Thank you, sir. nice and solid. I'm just going to scoot this up just a hair here. Just a little bit. Make sure everything's lined up. That looks good. We'll go ahead and cut these. Fish those out in a minute. We do not need them anymore. We'll go ahead and toss your strings. go through and put the rest of these strings on here. Make sure we have good tension on it. That right, feels good. Pulling that plate mate nice and snug up against that bridge plate. And using these things will get you a lot longer life out of your instrument. Keep you from running into a whole lot of other issues that can be caused by a chewed up and worn out bridge plate. As you can see on this specific instrument, when that bridge plate does get chewed up, not so easy to replace. Working with F holes, so 
You know, you got to kind of save what you got going on here. Bridge pin here. Sam, would you grab my mirror and my flashlight from my bench, please? So you got this under string tension. You can see this bridge has had quite a bit of damage in the past. The saddle's wanting to kind of kink a little bit forward, but we're gonna we're gonna work a little bit on that once we get a little bit more progress done on this repair. And we're just gonna check down through in the F-hole. Everything looks like, and it looks nice and clean. Everything's on there is solid. It's kind of very difficult to see, but it literally just just protects the bridge plate from getting chewed up any further than what it is. So, and that's it. That is a Mitchell Mitchell's plate mate F hole install. Uh, we'll do another one of these on a regular acoustic. Uh, it's a lot easier because you can go through the F hole and kind of hold everything in place, line it all up with some bridge pins ahead of time, then get it under string tension, let that sit. Um, Sam's going to tune this to pitch. We're probably going to let this sit. You really don't have to let it sit very long. Um, I think whenever you're installing it on a regular acoustic, if you just it's pressure sensitive tape. So as you hold it in place, you really want to kind of hold it in for about 30 seconds and then you can let go. It should stay nice and solid. Um, also a very important thing, I like to take a little sanding block. Uh, when you do have a sound hole you can work through, go across the bottom of the bridge plate a couple times with the sanding block, clean it up with some naphtha, let that dry before you go through and put the bridge plate on. Um, that's how we would do it on the acoustic. Like I said, we'll come back and we'll show you how to do that. And this is how it's done through the F-holes. Hope you guys enjoyed and we'll see you all in the next one. Thank you very much.